Hey, this is Gameplay Dismay with uh, Wingaticus coming at you with another uh, sci-fi movie review with my counterpart, Canon Fadral here, if you want to say hi. Hello. And today we are doing uh, Johnny Mnemonic from 1995 from Robert Hongo. Ro oh, ro sorry. Yeah, Robert Hongo. Wait. Robert Longo. Longo. Sorry. <laughs> I can't read my own damn handwriting. Sorry. Robert Longo. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah. Based off of the uh, short <laughs> by William Gibson, which he also did the screenplay for. Uh, yeah. Johnny Mnemonic. What do you think about this crazy-ass movie that uh, apparently is a million years ahead of its time? <laughs> yeah. It's both ahead of its time and of its time. I guess we're gonna we're gonna roll down a list here. The, the, just an overview. It's like, yeah, it's got all the elements of like good, great sci-fi cyberpunk adventure. Um, uh, good stuff in there, and that's no surprise given the author Gibson's written a whole lot of cyberpunk stuff and oh, nice. even steampunk and retro punk and stuff. So he's he's done some cool things. Water punk. Um, <laughs> and um, he was responsible for part of the screenplay, but I heard there was some executive meddling in there too. Ooh, yeah, it seems like it. He's got some things right. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. It does hit a little too, too close to home, and there's... Yeah. Uh, full spoilers pandemic. ahead. Uh, yeah, the whole pandemic oh, yeah. thing. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. Full spoilers ahead going forward. We're going to be jumping around this whole this whole movie from, you know... As you know, Johnny jumping says, around the whole I will game. wreck your whole board from here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry, yeah. this How you're saying this is too on the money with the time and the day. Like, what a time to go back and watch this movie like I, right. in 2021 when i the last time i watched this movie was definitely like in the freaking 90s or something like that all right well i did go back and watch back to the future part two in 2015 mm. and blade runner in 2019 <laughs> yeah kind of... i'm definitely i've been doing that too <laughs> it's we're good in stuff. A, we're in a sci-fi we're living in a sci-fi world anyway yeah we are and i and I, yeah totally and this movie totally uh, gets it right with the pandemic going on and technology taking over. We're not to the we don't have the the crazy like you know Summer Wars internet yet, which I can't wait for. But uh, I'm, I well, like that they're still trying to take off. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I like that they're that they already knew they're like okay, this is what it's gonna be like. <laughs> Even though they're working with tiny little computers back then, they're like oh, in the future, you know. You're going to put a VR headset on and run through the cyberspace and all this. Shit. And it's like, we haven't even got to that yet. Like, from how far, how far computers and technology have gone. Like, well, we have we do have VR. And they do have, like, spaces you can hang out, like virtual spaces and shit like that or whatever. Or, like, virtual hangouts yeah, or something. But you can't surf the... Come and go. Yeah, but you can't surf the internet and, like, have this huge, crazy universe or something. Like, Summer Wars, the anime movie, like... Uh, like something like likened to something like that, which is what this movie gives the vibe off of what it is. Uh, and he right. said iPhone somewhere in there. He's like, I need some iPhones. Yeah, he requests a Thompson iPhone. So yeah. this is actually where the movie loops laps itself. Yeah. Um, he asked for an iPhone, but he's not actually asking for an Apple product. He's asking for a, the the headset. Yeah. Because it's just the screens in your eye, down your eyes, right? Yeah. But ironically, of course, it's not ironically, just accidentally and hilariously, <laughs> it's an iPhone. It's a, your because eyeball Apple phone. Would steal that, <laughs> Apple would steal that branding later. And then yeah. it loops around on itself, and Futurama makes a joke about the Apple iPhone, which is just a phone they stick in your eye. Yeah. It's all coming together, all these universes. Yep. <laughs> Either they're referencing each other, or like, yeah, or it's just some kind of crazy coincidence. Uh, yeah, it's all kinds of things. Um, so yeah, I like that they got some things right, although they do a couple things wrong. I mean, payphone still existing. I think that's kind of. <laughs> hey, I, I actually yeah. saw a payphone, uh, not too recently. I mean, I know they still. It was exist, way out but... there, but it was out there. <laughs> not nearly as convenient as. Uh... They're as um, present as the movie would have you think. It's just one of the things no one really thought about because they know none of them have cell phones. If you notice, I like the way he Although jacked. She does have... Yeah, yeah, I like the way he jacked into the the their that weird payphone, whatever it was. It was like an internet phone, like a internet booth or some shit. Yeah, because I think back then it was still based on the idea that getting online would require a hard wire and terminal. They didn't really see the wire, the whole Wi-Fi revolution coming. Which, yeah. to be fair, is I mean, no they're, one really did. And, they're until kinda... everyone realized we could do everything with our phone. 
Yeah, they're kind of there with the. Uh, they're like stealing the 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 crazy uh, dolphins sonar. He's like, we can go through whatever, like this other kind of signal that reaches everything or whatever. So they're kind of thinking along those lines to gain access to the information that they're looking for, uh, like scanning the web or yeah. whatnot. Which is yeah, like yeah, how you're saying. Was yeah, like how you're saying. Military. Yeah, that was based off re uh, something real, right? Well, the military has a long and probably was that checkered history. Staring, staring at goats movie or whatever. But no, like how, history. how you're saying earlier, like the writer in the studio or or having button heads or something like that. It's like amazing that damn dolphin made it into the movie. <laughs> it's probably where he lost yeah. the budget. They're like, uh, <laughs> if you're insisting on the dolphin, we're gonna take away half your budget. <laughs> He's like, it's yeah. a, it's fine. It'll look like cyberpunk rustic anyway. <laughs> I'm just making so, stuff up here. I'm just it's totally just me joking around. Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure it was a fake dolphin. <laughs> it looked real enough. But I saw its eye. I did. Oh, I felt bad for that dolphin. Poor guy stuck in a cage. He seemed on. He seemed down with the mission. He was like telling him what to do and he, shit. I think he was in charge. He, he might have been. Probably was. I'm pretty sure he was. Douglas Adams will tell you that. He was, yeah, he's totally in charge. Dolphins are probably smarter than humans. <laughs> yeah. Give him, give him a headset and the ability to tell us what to do. <laughs> we should probably listen. Motherfuckers got shit to say. Uh, but yeah, going through like uh, just yeah, watching this movie and seeing all the crazy stuff that it has in there is just like. Pretty wild. Uh, I feel like if this movie did have like a like a big like huge blockbuster budget, even for like ninety five, uh, it could have done a lot better, or maybe a better director, or something. Because everything feels kind of, all the acting's all very kind of stiff. And I, I, you can get better acting from Keanu Reeves out of that out of that time. Like speeds around that time, right? So like, you know, yeah, a lot can... of his performance just is just his same angry character from Speed. Yeah, kind of. But he did a better. It. Yeah, he did a better job in, in that one. And even Point Break, you know, uh, better seen better stuff from him around that time. So yeah, he can do good. I, I think he just depends on the director who's working with him, and the takes yeah. that they choose, which is the, which is the biggest deal. Um, yeah, well, as far as I can tell, it was. Um, he's yeah, always hit. Main problem with he's this. always hit. The, he's always hit or miss. The um. X the, the, just the direction seems so everything about it is, it seemed like a B-movie production you know I mean yeah. it, it felt like <laughs> out of place like being straight to DVD which is sad because totally it's a lot of a lot of cool concepts and a lot of work went into it obviously but it's also yeah the Ghost in the yeah. Machine reference and like that that was the same time as Ghost in the Shell like or whatever this movie's around the same time came around the same time and uh yeah, yeah. I mean like I said we all know that Ghost in the Shell is a lot to western Cyberpunk and, and Blade Runner and stuff, and this yeah. is just kind of these things were all popular because everyone, no one knew how the internet was going to be. Yeah, half of them were. That, I like how a lot of people got it halfway right. <laughs> we still yeah. really haven't gotten to that point yet. We're getting there. It's just it, this the thing is, it's hard to predict anything that far out because this movie was made in '95. It's now what, 25 years later? Yeah, 26 years later pretty crazy yeah so i mean it is really it gets to be really difficult to predict these kind of things i don't, I, don't, I liked it i i, I, I like the back. i like the subject matter like yeah like um i feel like this movie could have been a lot better yeah if it just had better production uh, and a better director uh not knocking the director. I haven't seen the movie a lot of this uh, any of his other movies, so I don't know what he else he's done. He's probably he's probably done some classics for all I know, and I don't know. But just Not it, really. it just seems movie. like it just seems like this every yeah just a lot of the acting from everybody seems kind of stiff. How are you saying like B movie kind of stuff and like the like the screens that they're talking in, in are like clearly like cardboard. And like a lot, and then one of them is like not even cut out all the way right. You can see the seams and stuff where it's like not even yeah. sh a straight square. 
it's like, all right, this is what they're going with. <laughs> this is what they think is fine <laughs> for this movie. Yeah. It's like, I mean, I get the, the, the yeah, like the rest, the, you know, the, the worn down style of like this, you know, future, worn out future, everything's high tech, but broken in already. But yeah, a little too far. <laughs> Shit's falling apart. Your set's falling apart. Yeah, that's what I noticed. Is it was it just the? It's all kind of hokey. Yeah, it's not just the acting. It was the general, the editing, the the cinematography, the um the music, which uh, there's a, we can go into that too if you want to. Um, <laughs> I like the music. It's just got a weird music of good music and, and <laughs> terrible music and or or just bizarre music or not or just yeah yeah. And that's where it just kind of falls down because I think yeah, given not even a proper budget, just more experience or it's industrial. Cushion. It's industrial music. <laughs> The metal clanging. No, the score is what I'm talking about. Like, <laughs> the, the metal and the industrial. That was the fun part. Uh, yeah. They get this weird, like, yeah. like inappropriate seeming, um, what you call it, just regular musical score. When they could have just kept on going with the industrial and the synths and stuff, and, and actually had it. Yeah. More fun I did kind of on, on point. I did kind of notice, or it, 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 it kind of jumped around in tone. Yeah, and I think they it stuck to one, but there's a whole thing behind that too. Apparently, um, I don't know if you want to get into the making of it, but it kind of goes into what we said. But no, what, what I want to get to, yeah, it's like the whole damn thing felt just a little too much like a B movie. And like the other part that fell down was like all the concepts are great, but I didn't like I couldn't hardly get invested in any of the characters. We know the actors are capable of better performances, but there's not enough backstory. They just rely on. Kind of, they're giving the opening crawl like Star Wars, but it only, yeah. raises, it only raises more questions. It doesn't set enough of the stage. They're like, there we got these guys, these guys. That they feel more like, like just just chess pieces and characters at some point. They're just here to be. Yeah, move everything forward. <laughs> yeah, and he got saved by that girl. You know, talk about saved by getting saved. Uh, like he would have just been done for if, if she didn't like crawl, crawl through that vent and be wondering what the hell they're doing because she's so obsessed with that dude for some reason. Yeah. And it's like I mean they try to give her a backstory, but then it's also that was like cheesy. Oh yeah, shout out to uh, here I got a name here. Um, Dina Dina I don't know if they put it in wrong, but Di- Diane Ma- Dina Meyer. Meyer yeah Mayor. Dina Meyer Mayor, uh, Mayor. This, from NY, Stormtroopers. Yeah. Shout out to her. Star I thought Troopers. she did a good job in this movie, or at least it. A decent job in it. like in a lot of the shots yeah. they chose for her like stunts and shit were like literally she like she like literally like, fell into somebody instead of kicking like how she's supposed to be kicking or punching them and i was like what yeah. that's the sh- that's the shot that's you the choose shot. <laughs> yeah that, like well it's like that joke from the simpsons the um, mr burns is trying to make his film we did 37 takes that was the best one <laughs> yeah <laughs> like I said, yeah, the whole thing is let down by like amateurish production, and they need to like just a little slightly more focus on the human. I feel like this movie would actually have been better if it was like ten minutes longer. What? Just if you just yeah, seriously, if it was How? ten minutes longer and paced slightly, and you could have fleshed out all the characters a little more. I mean, you don't need a whole lot, but a few lines of dialogue. Nah. Uh... I mean, the character I felt that was most developed was Takashi because he um he had his backstory and some motivations. Yeah. I mean, partly well, partly it's the way Johnny and Marcus his character is they deliberately make him a cipher by taking out his backstory that's part of the plot so yeah he's like i have to like get it back <laughs> he's like who am i i was good i was yeah. i was thinking that girl in the machine was his mom or some crap because she's always like trying to find him or whatever but she well, just that, wants to save that's everybody. the other thing that was unclear they left some things unclear could have focused them out better and i'm just saying a few minutes of dialogue here and there with slightly better pacing and, and i guess maybe better editing would have made it a 10 minute longer movie that felt even shorter than it did because it for some, it's weird when a movie feels longer than it is you're like okay yeah they, this one definitely did that's why i'm like i don't think it needs minutes. to be longer <laughs> it does need to be longer it just needs to be longer but better paced if that makes any sense nah i can i it think it, this one can be better paced and then you would have had a better movie I mean, or even cut like it just longer. rearrange some parts or whatever like cut all the cheesy crap that didn't work clearly <laughs> That made it look cheaper. If it was an hour and 45 minutes, but it felt like an hour and 20 minutes, I mean, that would have been great. Like, that just flew by, but it was an hour and a half, and it felt more like almost two hours. Yeah, it definitely felt like two hours. Just because it was so 
disjointed and again that comes down to the dead eating and scene choice and even things down to the body blocking and it's like every every other take I could feel like the actor going and action and the characters start walking around <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah college it's production to... yeah it's a college production but yeah and they have so, a star studded cast here just to run through some here uh, they got you know Keanu Reeves prime, at the prime you know he's doing everything he's probably speed I think just came out or whatever he already right, he was Bill already and Ted and, and Point Break so he's ready to go and then uh, Henry Rollins is there from Black Flag or that's pretty cool. Uh, Dolph, yeah. freaking Dolph, in there as the G, as the prophet guy, Street Prophet, whatever his name was, and uh, that was crazy. I forgot that was even a thing. And yeah. the main bad guy, what's his name? Uh, with the crazy name. Uh, sorry, I can't find it here. It was like Udo or something. Right. Yeah, damn, I lost. And don't it. forget Takashi. Yeah, Takeshi. Takeshi, yeah. Pop, pop up again in Battle Royale. <laughs> yeah, Takeshi from Battle Royale. And, uh... Damn, I had another one movie he was in. I, uh, I lost it. The uh, remake of Ghost in the Show, which shares more than a couple similarities with this, only that was done really badly. Yeah. Um, Takeshi. But yeah, yeah like Battle Royale, Ghost I guess that the was show. the one I was thinking of. The remake of Ghost in the Shell took more than this than it did from the anime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's <was> weird. It's <laughs> just like, okay, weird choice movie. Yeah. Um, and like, also, yeah, so. What was the disease they had? What, what, what was the. Ice T, don't. Legendary Ice T, don't diss him. <laughs> yeah, Ice T, sorry, yeah, of course. Clearly he's in this movie. <laughs> he's the main guy. Uh, yeah. I see. Uh, we'll see. His acting, his acting's come a long way because I, d- I didn't think too much of his performance. He here. adds totally. He adds the B movie to this movie. <laughs> even just his costume, even like a lot of the costumes are kind of cheesy, and uh, and like the guns, you can they just have like things taped to them, and they're like, okay, it's cyberpunk now, or it's like, or here it's the future. Even actually, <laughs> even actually makes fun of it because he disassembles one and it's still a gun, just smaller. Yeah, it's just a little lower gun. What all? What all those mods do? Who knows? It's future tech, and they call them low techs. And I like how it's just still. It's always just a class war, culture war, or classes. You know, it's yeah. always a class war. It's always a class war. And then he's like, I, "I'm supposed to be up there. I need my ten thousand dollar hooker and my press shirts and whatever. I need to be in the city." He's like, "Screw you, outskirts people." Shout out to Cyberpunk yeah. the video game because this is like totally. Uh, and then yeah this cyberpunk plot is almost exactly like this movie uh not spoiling anything for cyberpunk the game because it's like literally the start of the game you you have the chip stuck in your head and the only way to take it out is you might die and you have and that's the game is like trying to figure out what the hell to do and the thing but this one in the game the thing stuck in your head is actually keanu reeves and he's like yelling yeah at you and shit or whatever uh but yeah it's funny how and he's in this in that game and it's like it's the same year, 2021, 2020. It's just crazy. The parallels. It was just, yeah. like, pretty nutso. And there's, like, net runners, and they have the wire thing. Like, they ha- literally have that weapon in the game. Uh, and they're called net runners and all that shit. And just, like, yeah, just, like, I know that com- that, that's that genre is, you know, for, you know, for, for, you know, old. But it's just, uh, well, it's, tropes, but it's just fair, fun. It's in the- yeah make a lot of these happen in the first place oh cool yeah so it's fun to see it all like you come to get calmer all come around <laughs> and keanu reeves is still there having fun in the fucking cyber world he was he was there the first time <laughs> he's still a cyberpunk yeah he keeps on punking yeah totally it's awesome and he did a he no, did he's, and then that goes and to show you from his acting performance he does a great job in the game way better than he does in this movie <laughs> which is crazy yeah, well, like I said, it's just sadly a B-move production. But then, so apparently, not a lot of people were happy with this. Nah. And there's... um. I was not happy with this. <laughs> and I want it to be. And it could be better because apparently there's two different cuts and... So a total of three different cuts of this movie. What? And two different soundtracks. Ooh. Because the production was that that fraught and that 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 messed up um there's an international cut then there's a japanese cut cool and then there there's a different soundtrack by a different composer and i was like man what 
<laughs> yeah. A whole different composer? Yeah. That's nuts. How often does that happen? It is. Well, it happened in 2001. <laughs> oh. Um, the story of 2001 is Kubrick asked the um, A composer to do some music, and he played some classical music, and he's like, here, I want something kind of like this. And then, but then he decided, Kubrick decided he liked the classical music so much, he just kept it, and the poor composer wrote an entire score for that movie, didn't get to have any of his music used. Oh, uh, weird. <laughs> yeah, movies, movie production can be really weird sometimes. Um, oh, the yeah, he used wonder... the classical score instead of the new ones that he was, that the guy was writing? Right, he yeah. decided, he, he had, kind of had the classical as a placeholder. Yeah. He decided he liked it so much, he might as well just... Um, He's like, this is too good. <laughs> just keep it. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. He liked the way it came out. You know, him, well, he's a perfectionist, so if it came I, out some way he liked. I would love to have a crack then. at this movie. Give me all that footage and all those cuts in the soundtrack, and I'll turn this movie into a B plus. <laughs> <laughs> or a C plus. <laughs> C minus. It wants to be a B movie, but then I think it's like comes out as a C movie. Yeah. And like I said, a lot of it, what it comes down to is I think just care like the basic stuff, the fundamentals. You know, they just need um, some editing, some more character work, and you know, just you can tell it just sucks. This is kind of it's kind of right there on the edge, not on the edge, but you could see where it could have been great. Living on the and edge. Then Keanu would get his, ch his chance four years later with the Matrix. So I mean, at least that happened. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah we'll also, we'll sorry. Yeah, totally. He's he's and totally injected in this whole cyber world <laughs> since 95 he is the matrix yeah but yeah and this this goes to the story in characters like i said it needs to be fleshed out a little more just the low techs are the low techs you don't know why they're top why they're fighting the high techs it's just class warfare which is easy but it also yeah man if you can you can have money the, you can afford the mods dude and if you're modding yourself you're gonna turn yourself into dolph living in a church with a knife cross and then having a metal body <laughs> the only way to stop going this. crazy yeah like i said the main character he's one of my favorite kind of parts of this movie <clears throat> like the, the main characters they're just like you can tell they're just kind of following beats in the story it's like they run around then they find each other and they're working together then they kiss at the end just because that story structure but they didn't do enough to like explain why those things happen to those characters and like like i said partly with johnny's mnemonics Part character is somewhat intentional because he has memory race, but yeah, that was easy. That's easy for him. Yeah. Up. Everyone else needs to be fleshed out. And then like, yeah, my, the most memorable part is when he's actually throwing a hissy fit at the, <laughs> bottom of the bridge there. Yeah, that's the only part character. Most character I saw out of him. It gave me the or yeah, it yeah. gave me the most. I was like, oh, that's the kind of person he is. And I was like, oh, this guy kind of sucks. And it's at the end of the movie, so I was like, oh fuck. No wonder he's all like doesn't want to give his life for the cure. <laughs> I guess a normal person yeah. in this situation, or a, a more a lesser class or person, would have uh, made had an easier choice to make. Yeah. Easy, easier to make like the right choice. Takahashi has a, a better fleshed out story. I mean, yeah, and even he, he even he stakes. was on his dying deathbed. He was like, "Just take it." <laughs> He's like, "Whatever." He's like, yeah. "Here, have the password." And I noticed one thing too. The other, the other one just um. Uh, who else? Yeah, like the bad guy chasing them. I didn't. He was just a corporate stooge. Didn't really have any motivations, which is sometimes all you need for a bad guy. Um, oh, the other, yeah, the 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 main yakuza guy or whatever. Yeah, that was under that was under Takeshi or or Takashi. Uh, yeah. I like and how like, they just they... keep his name. Pretty much, it's funny. Yeah, and but then like I said, like the other characters that were interesting, like. How does Dolph Lundgren get to be a street preacher with crazy implants? <laughs> How does he's Henry doing Owens jobs, dude? That's what he they explained his character in the in that. I, I like that little exposition scene where they're like, I think when I think they're talking about him, they're like, yeah, they're just like, just takes any job and then just never people never stop implant upgrading themselves and that's and then if he's already that huge, freaking Dolph Lundgren like type of dude, and then you pump that guy full up of like. Uh, a bounty hunter upgrading himself with bounties <laughs> like of course he's gonna be some crazy ass fucking guy like 
I like how he's just like some Jesus freak or whatever. Who he's like, who are the sinners this time? <laughs> and Takeshi Takashi's yeah. like calling him up. He's like, he, you're my guy. He's like, go punish these people. They're sinners or something weird. <laughs> he's just taking advantage of them. But that's uh, just the point. I want to know how he came to Jesus. Oh, I don't know. I like that. You know I like. I, mean? I don't know. I mean, I, that says a lot about his character right there. Is just how that he's a crazy Jesus freak that upgrades himself. I like that. that was, he's one of my favorite parts of the movie. Yeah, but I'm just saying, it just feels a little incoherent. Like the rest of the movie, it's just a little incoherent. You know, just a little more. You don't have to explain everything. That's how you end up with Solo. But you know, <laughs> just yeah. um, just give me some more hints. Not everything has to be explained totally, but. Give me a roadmap. Give me a give me a, an a an A to B. Give me a. Well, his A to B is some, getting the thing out of his head, and then everything else in between is like. No, I'm talking about the, the other, these other characters, like um, like the preacher. Give me an A to B. He's just kind of there, fully. He's Takeshi's bounty man. Well, that nah, that know. is obsessed with upgrading himself, so he takes jobs so he can keep upgrading himself. <laughs> I like. I, I mean, know. I thought that. I thought that his what all he is more fleshed out than the than Ice T would explain to him, yeah, Ice T to me. <laughs> explain Ice T. Explain what's his name? Uh, yeah, Rollins. You don't get any of. Yeah, exactly. Kind of there yeah. Place so I think system. you're you can pick on the other characters more than him. I'm just saying because, but that's the thing because his, he was so damn interesting. That's why we want to know more about him. Oh yeah, Street yeah, features. yeah. Features. It's like you know. Yeah, and, we're yeah, yeah, yeah. And and the other ones are don't even have that. I mean, Spider's kind of cool. I mean, he's played by Rollins, so he's kind of cool automatically. But then yeah, he also like he's always cool. They they like try to do something at the beginning where they like try to blame him for um, what's her name Jane's faulty implants, but then. He's like, no, it wasn't me. There's this NAS. They, they don't really explain NAS. All you get hints of it, and he says it's the machines. That's the uh, that's the part I liked about it. Was uh, he sounds like he sounds like one of those five G anti anti five G towers anti vaxxers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's combined. what it was. The social dilemma. I don't know if you've seen it yet, but it, it, it and he's like, all this fucking technology is just killing us. And he's like, this is the result. of some just you know nature taking its course it's just like we're you know i mean kill yourselves with technology sure have kill yourself with technology or whatever and some like random thing comes at it or that's what i thought the the disease was and, that, and i'm like yeah i wasn't quite sure what it was the pandemic of like what they were fighting just some crazy the so black they, the black shakes i think they called it or whatever or something yeah, weird there's a snippet on the tv where they talk about it first appeared in information workers um oh really so oh, that's yeah, cool they, yeah it's only it's a blink and you'll miss it moment. So the main, movie kind of failed to explain like the main thing, the stakes. You know, they've got a cure, but is yeah. it a... I like the theme of technology's like killing them because that's and even more how more relevant it is today. How true it is <laughs> or whatever. Like technology is is crazy. How he's Henry Rollins is right. No, why we don't know that us? yet. Five G doesn't kill us. Yeah, we pretty much do. We're all gonna have microwaves built in. And, and then the five G is going to mess with their microwaves. That Wi Fi sickness BS people try to pull is, is obviously nonsense. <laughs> yeah. Well, they what if you have an implant that. like Johnny Mnemonic has an implant in his brain? Would the Wi Fi affect him then? Who knows? Maybe well, it only affects people that have implants. Well, you know what would help if the movie bothered to explain all this? Yeah, that's a big if. That would be. <laughs> it's a big if, and that would help the movie a little more. Uh, movie a lot more. Yeah. Although the pharmaceutical shenanigans, those are pretty self-explanatory because greed is universal. Yeah. Um, of course, yeah, they want to keep, and, you know, more profitable to more keep them sick. More profitable to treat. Yeah, that's America in a nutshell. We, yeah, where we got people like overcharging on insulin that costs nothing to make. And yeah, and that's that, that idiot. What's his that Shkreli or whatever who like see the more true today price, prices. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's all I was like. This movie's like made for now, <laughs> and there was like there's crazy, and that's how they saw. That's how they saw it. Like his crazy, shitty features, like somehow are reality. Yeah. Except we don't we have fun things. internet. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. We got rule thirty four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It makes up for a lot, maybe. <laughs> what is that again? Probably not. Uh, if, if anything exists, there will be the uh, the adult version of it. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's rule three four. Sure, why not? Yeah. 
Uh, well, yeah. I guess going on to the any more stories or characters that we can talk about. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Shout out to a... Udo Udo, Udo Keeve is Ralphie. It was the guy giving him the job in the first place. Uh, who gave him the fucking shit to put in his head? And what? <laughs> explain to me how his the gigs works in his head. <laughs> Can you explain that to me a little bit? Well, they they don't. That's part of the stakes the movie sets up. That's one thing they do set up kind of clearly. It's like probably in, the best way. That they, in clearly, they um <laughs> he took part of his brain and he turned into storage. With the laughably small sword, they could have used. Oh, the okay, drive. okay, okay, okay. So this is why he has. He's like, don't worry okay. about it. I have enough spaces because he already. Erase that part of his memory to 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 count as for the for the expanded space or whatever because he only has three. How much did he have? One eighty, right? Or one sixty gigs? Well, he, I forget how yeah, much he doubled it. He doubled it in the beginning. Yeah, he had eighty. He doubled it to one sixty. Yeah. And um, then they needed three twenty. Yeah. Or so, three sixty or so. Yeah, they needed three twenty something like that. Yeah. So I was like, well, how is this even working? Well, not well. I mean, that was what they established, and that led to the movie to dramatic tension, is they have to get the information out of his head before it kills him, because it's pretty much taking up all his brain. It's encrypting his, uh... They, 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 they what is it? Uh, compressed it too much. <laughs> they compressed the file yeah. too much to fit in that they small space. They call it synaptic leakage or something? Yeah, synaptic leakage, yeah, yeah. That's where, oh, I guess, the data is yeah. leading into his, leaking to his brain. It's killing him. Yeah. Which is and like I crazy. said, I can go buy a flash drive for twenty bucks with better, better storage than that. Well, yeah. Well, I don't know. And in a brain implant. Think about that. That's his brain implant storage. Yeah, I mean, but. I know we have tiny just... little micro discs now that have that amount of space. They have like a terabyte. But well, yeah, then same. yeah, I guess. But it is like a. It's supposed to be a brain implant, so that's got to be. Well, yeah, it is like a. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> but that's just now. Just, that's, that's a pretty good guess for back then, man. They were talking for back then. That that was like huge. They might as well have been saying yeah. terabytes or some shit for now. Like if we were yeah, to make this movie now, they would have been like, "Oh, it's twenty terabytes." And then yeah. in twenty years, you'd be like, "Those idiots." <laughs> well, you, you do what Star Trek does and make up a fictional unit, so you can. Just, it sounds arbitrarily large, but you can still count because it's a unit of measurement. Yeah, cause zigawatts. So, no Star Trek. They use the to get around that whole thing in the next generation. They define the computer's memory bank in the in terms of quads, which oh, my, they don't specify. My quads. It's just, yeah. <laughs> so you have you don't really have a comparison to <laughs> modern. Well, yeah, what's a quad storage? So you can't be like. How many quads well, does data just... have? That's what I want to know. Who can say? <laughs> they probably did at some point in the show. I'm sure someone said somewhere. Yeah. But the point being is they don't compare it to bytes or bits or whatever just because... But Captain, I have three billion quads. Of, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> he's, like C3, he's like C-3PO. Keep it... Keep the, the, the analogy kind of magic and also... Um, just so you don't have to compare it with modern storage capacities. Okay, right. random random question. Who would win in a fight, C-3PO or Data? Data. Well, Data, um, C-3PO's not a combat droid. And... Well, neither is Data. Oh, wait, he can kick ass, though, doesn't he, in the movies? He's considerably stronger. Um, yeah. Well, than, that's the evil the version of him that does cool stuff. But no, the, um, the regular, well, lore is just, the, just the... He's not allowed to, right? But C-3PO's a droid, so he could easily fuck up C-3PO. Yeah, I guess Data would win. Yeah, it wouldn't be much of a fight. Yeah. Now, again, uh, data against um, battle droid or something, that'd be much, much different. Yeah. You'd have to arm them kind of equivalently. <laughs> yeah. But. Um, yeah, like I said. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> yeah. They don't explain what the NAS was. Might be implants, but then they've got a bunch of poor people. So how do poor people afford implants? But then you know, I mean, that's why they have the cheap, cheapo implants. And there's the high class implants. Yeah, and the cheapo class, implants make they... you all whacked out, like the girl there, which people try to blame on the, the black shakes, but the implants don't give the, you the the, the, the shakes. That's that what he said. Then. He doesn't give us that, or doesn't give you that. See, they, 
they need to explain that better. Yeah. They, they, they kind of didn't. That's. It's all over the place. Feeling, I mean. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of poor people there, and even if poor people get shitty implants, I mean, get ill. I mean, it would make more sense if the implants were making people sick. And that's like, oh, yeah. go back to, you know, and then it would fall more in line with Henry Rollins speech about technology and being going to be more natural and more naturalist type of people, which I agree with. Uh, kind of. Except even though I, I even implants, though here I am on to advance the story. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I am on technology. So, I mean, I can't really say much. Yeah. So, yeah, I think they just need to, it just needs some some re another pass on the screenplay there, like another draft. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, the yeah. story the story was the most compelling part for me is all the things that they're, the themes that they're going for and all like I like I see what they're going for and like I feel like it, yeah, there's something there it could be better if almost they should just remake this movie at some point, or some crap, and they should get yeah. all the same. <laughs> have they ever done this? Can they get all the same actors to just come back? And then remake a movie. Has that ever happened? Besides, like, reshoots? Like, a straight-up remake of a movie with the same people? Like, how Only Resident... Count the Force Awakens. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, but they weren't playing the same characters doing the same things. I'm talking about, like, a legit, like, remaking... Like, how, like going from Resident Evil PlayStation 1 to, to Resident Evil GameCube remake, which is they brought back the same director and rebuilt the same game about growing up from the same ground. Like, literally, you know made the same shit over again no well um, they should do that sometimes get, some movie <laughs> sometimes, you get, sometimes you get characters from i want to see the, the same actors pop it up in the remake and it, yeah they always they always do that thing or whatever because by the time the reboot comes along it's always been like 20 or 30 20 years or whatever so it's time to reboot it yeah but i want to see a so movie so bad that they have to remake it we're just old. Everyone but old. Yeah. No. Not old. Like, like, maybe five to ten years later or something like that, where their characters, where they can all still, everybody still all can play the same parts, <laughs> and they just remake the movie, but just better. Like I don't know. I know. I'm just thinking. Again. I'm just thinking crazy here. It's something they do in video games a lot. So I'm, I'm, I'm like, it's got to happen at some at some point to a movie. Like, bring in the same actors and same dudes, just literally just fucking shot for shot, make it better. Or, we're not shot for shot, but that's the whole point we're making it. But, like, shoot it again with the same fucking people that made it the first time. <laughs> Which is, like, a bigger budget and a better writer and a better score or something like that. But the same director, because of that, that would need, uh, need to be there. Three shoots is all we're going to get. Yeah. I guess the Snyder Cut is the closest thing to that. Because that's like yeah, a whole they, movie all over again. So I guess it's kind of like that. But it's just taking the old footage and spicing it around or whatever. Or unused no, footage. No, they gave him 70 million apparently to, to do something. I thought it was only like five to seven minutes of new footage. That's reshoots, buddy. No, it's, it's a four-hour movie now. Yeah, but that was existing footage that he, they didn't use because the other guy made the movie again, pretty much. I don't know, man. He's, he's redoing his existing footage. That's why the only new shoot shot footage he shot was only 5 to 10 minutes or some crap of, of new shoot like new footage or like new lines and new whatever. Pretty sure that was good. I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's it. He's reworking what they already left on the cutting room floor or some crap. I don't know enough about it. To be yeah. honest, I'm not... Uh, particularly yeah too thrilled about it i mean i, I want to watch it i'm very interested to see what it is well, it was yeah, a terrible curious. movie <laughs> can't I'm, wait to see I'm what happens in the way it's like i'm watching a guy with a can of gasoline approaching a dumpster fire that's the kind of curiosity <laughs> yeah. i got how far is this gonna follow him <laughs> yeah. after he explodes yeah so that's <laughs> what i'm curious about pretty much which is uh but yeah, sorry, too many offshoots here. Uh, if we want to go in, yeah, if you want to go in a little more into production and stuff, we already kind of t hit on that uh, we'll a bunch. About it. Yeah, and just like we'll, uh, we'll talk about influences then. I noticed a couple things. Yeah, go ahead. Um, it just uh, that, that what's her name, the Ghost in the Machine, reminded me. Yeah, of, what's her that face was from cool. Borderlands. Uh, I don't know Borderlands. Oh, uh, 
angel or whatever tell, helping the vault hunters find the vault, just popping up and giving them messages. Uh huh. They look they look very very similar, so I wouldn't be surprised if Borderlands took a cue from that because Borderlands seems to have taken a cue from the production design. Cool. Which I think was nice, but then that, again, that's where like the amateurish the amateurishness of it let me down because I don't know if I remember Terminator Genesis where the uh, 1985 LA didn't feel real. Yeah. They, they said the same problem, right? Yeah. I know what they're going for, but it didn't look quite. <laughs> I felt like they were in sets the whole time. <laughs> yeah. I could see they didn't the seams. Quite get it. Yeah. I could see the seams and I could see where they started just yelled action, so. Yeah. Yeah, especially when Keanu was like on his, having his little meltdown on the bridge and he's talking about, I want to hear with the trash and the newspapers from last <laughs> month floating around. Yeah. It's like, you know what? It helped seeing some actual newspapers and litters. <laughs> like. Besides, not even the the same. Same. Not, it was like the same three the dumpsters. Same and it was like the background from Flintstones. Yeah. <laughs> it would have helped just seeing... Um, no, it's all the same. Some debris and litter and stuff. Not It, it wouldn't even have to be when he's talking. That would be too literal. But just, you know, <laughs> yeah. within, within like 30 seconds or two minutes of him saying that, have some of that just floating around just to remind you what he's talking about. You know, it would have yeah. driven it home, made it feel a little more real. It's like... It felt bad because I like I I really wanted to buy into it, but yeah, I still like I this movie. Couldn't. I I I give it the benefit. I I give it a pass, or because we're not to reviews yet, but I give it a little bit of pass because of all just how fun and forward thinking they are. They were with everything, and uh, yeah, and the only thing holding it back is uh, yeah, just the product, the 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 budget, and and uh, and just that, uh, and all, that all B everything. Movie quality. Yeah, that B movie. Like I could see. There's something there. Oh uh, yeah, but like I said, um, it's fun. It just it it's just fun to be a net runner. Out. And that cool wire thing, man. That thing shit. That that just. Uh, where is that in more movies? That remind me of the. Uh, if you remember from Battle Angel, Gretchka, the, the the gladiator had some of those. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, they did. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, bring that. And, and it's like in it's Cyberpunk. It, it is in there, but I, I feel like that's like either directly referencing this or that, you know, like how you said, it's probably like a cyberpunk staple or some crap like that. Well, Monif, it was a sci-fi staple too. I remember other stories have talked about yeah. similar things, just having, <clears throat> you can use a, a monofilament as a weapon because it's, String. yeah, it's ultra thin and it's yeah. really high tension. And then when he killed, killed that guy at the end, <laughs> when he's like, He's like, I'm just stronger than you, so I get to control your arm. <laughs> and you can cut your head yeah. off. It's like, oh, fuck, you lost in the arm wrestle. You, you're dead. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. You gotta pump more iron, buddy. If you're gonna be uh, Yakuza or whatever he was. And then, yeah, the other guy, his boss, wasn't very happy with him. Throughout the whole thing, he was, like, pissed off. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, like I said, the, it's like great story and setting, just like poor characters and world building. And that's so, uh, it's, like I said, it's halfway there. Yeah. In terms of. It's halfway there. Being an awesome movie. Like I said, he got his chance with the Matrix again, where they, they like, nailed all those parts of it, because. I'd say he got like his the... chance again in Cyberpunk, because that's like. I, no, I well, feel like that movie could literally just take place in that game, and it would be exactly the same because it's so much so similar. You just get messages on your phone, and people just call you. There's talking heads. You call Ralphie, gives you a thing, stick the shit in your head. Yeah, all right, sure, and then whatever. And like I was saying, it literally is the plot of the game, <laughs> so it's like exactly the same. Uh, like pretty much it was already. Yeah. I wonder if I can remake that movie in Cyberpunk. That would be... That would be something. you got to remake it in Minecraft. <laughs> Do they have the wires? Do they have the mono wires in, in Minecraft? But you can make... Um, apparently you can make working computers in Minecraft, so... Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, you can make yeah. calculators, but computers? Uh, Calculators are glorified. The computers are glorified calculators. Yeah, that's true. It's just ones and zeros. 
Uh, but yeah, anything else you want to say about this mnemonic device? Mm -hmm. I'm just yeah, the other influences. They got the Borderlands aesthetic, and they took some took some cues from that. The yeah. stuff that's coming afterwards has a little bit. Um, the nineties uh, CGI is so dated, but that's charming. Oh yeah, so shout out. Shout out to uh, uh, if anybody's knows uh, the Mind's Eyes videos, the old 3D CG animation that just had like, I think the just random things. The girl that did, graphics, yeah. I think her name was Jan Hammer that did the music for it or something. If I remember correctly. Shout out to her as well. Uh, the yeah, just I love those old tapes, and that was it seems like that fit in right right next to it. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. oh, this was a mind's eye segment that we put into Johnny Mnemonic, so have fun with that. And yeah. uh, and just like they call the yeah, they're just yeah, just I don't know. I feel and the, his weird avatar at the end when he was jumping in there, floating around in his cyberspace, and he had the suit on and shit. And uh, oh, I like the I like the Ghost in the Shell girl, the CEO. Cause she's like, yeah, they were like, yeah, the shit they're talking about is crazy. It's just the uh, what is it, San Junipero or something from Black Mirror. And they're like, yeah, she was a CEO and she opted to upload her consciousness or her persona into the into the CEO data bank, and now people are still listening to her and taking order from her because she her brain yeah. is in the machine. So it's basically her after her she died to, like six years ago or whatnot, and then. Uh, All right. And I thought that was fucking awesome. I was like, yeah, the fucking boss is a ghost. Everybody's just listening to. Until they tried to lead her at the end, apparently. Yeah. But, like, again, yeah, it's a very Black Mirror thing um, where they talk about she has, like, personhood under some, some law in Europe, but that yeah. like, the artificial person's law or something. So that was me. Yeah. Yeah, it was cool. So they obviously, it's just weird. Like, they, they thoroughly thought out some things and then kind of disregarded others. And it's like, so... Yeah, so that whole part did. was like a like a two set like a two sentence thing. I was like, oh damn. Yeah. It's like you should be diving more into that type of stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Any other parts like I liked? Uh, I see was was fun to watch. Henry Rollins was fun to watch. Um, uh, that weird bar the weird club that the that ralphie was hanging out at uh yeah he like with the opera singer and the heavy metal and the people and the like some artsy club or some crap <laughs> it was like you could probably see that somewhere today or you know when shit was still open yeah. a couple years ago or a year ago uh and yeah yeah just the whole design and aesthetic i like part of it like or most of it uh needed more flying cars I think. No, so they carefully avoided it for budget reasons, but they didn't yeah. have very many vehicles in the movie at all. There were still old, old taxis rolling around. Yeah, like, he's like, let me go to my buddy's taxi. Choice. Yeah. <laughs> Cyberpunky. They kind of limited it. Although, there's a brief thing when he goes from Beijing to Newark. He um, apparently was taking the Concorde. Oh. Yeah, what was the anime movie they were watching that they actually took the oh, screenshots yeah. for? Did you get the name of that? Yeah, that was, they mentioned in the credits, it was Demon City Shinjuku. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually want to watch that. I I, I, I think I've seen it before, but I've, uh, it's on my list of yeah, things my, to watch. Yeah, it's on my to watch list now. And then... Yeah, so that's awesome. <laughs> they, I love how the, the code to the, saving the world was anime. <laughs> or it yeah. was, it was oh, yeah, just, it was just messages about, off yeah. the screen, right? It wasn't just that movie. No, it was... It was, they actually want to talk about that because that's actually pretty cool. Like another thing they got right about it was the, the cryptography of it all. Yeah, they that put was the fun. They on his, on his head, then they lock it behind three images. It's, they make a key. Yeah. And actually, people do that kind of thing. I don't know if you recall GoDaddy. They're talking about their security for their um, hosting. They make um, their encryption. They actually like made a deal of it on the website. They have like a big giant fish tank, and they like used a 20 megapixel camera or something to take a picture of it then they use the data from that frame to generate a hash to encrypt um, the information so it's unbreakable what does the tank have to do with it oh it's just a giant picture that's the point it makes it's also a bunch of fish so they're swimming around randomly oh so it's always random or whatever yeah you can't and really fake it yeah yeah and at one point they also had lava lamps because they just make the random oh yeah yeah cool 
I love this. I love that freaking people. Yeah, the only way to protect the security is you gotta use lava lamps. So uh, that's what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yes. Thanks, lava lamps. They actually get the cryptography part of it right. Almost. I mean, it's like you need all the images to to rehash. Yeah, yeah. To make the um, that the part. That part they really thought out, and that, and I got a good grasp of what they were doing. I was like, yeah, and then he gets it, gets the images, and then he has them. He doesn't know them. And then they fax them to the guy, and then they'll download the data when he gets there. So you have to have the two pieces at all times or whatever. Or the key yeah. and him. So it's not just, like, him. Otherwise, people would just do what they're whole, doing the whole time. It's, like, extracting, yeah. trying to extract his data or whatnot. Right. So that was a really neat um, neat little point. Neat part. Yeah. Like I said, there's a weird, there's a weird mix of they got some things really right, and then other things are just kind of half-assed. It's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just so strange. Um, but yeah, so I really enjoyed that little bit of... Um, Do you want to talk about the dolphin some more? That threw me for fucking left curve there. I was like, what? And I was like, oh. And I was like, yeah. I warmed up to it. <laughs> At first, I was like, this is goddamn ridiculous. And then and I was like, yeah. I you remember what movie you were watching. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then I liked dolphins, so I was like, okay. <laughs> It's like they are as smart as dogs, so it's like, yeah, if it was a dog in a tank, I'd be, <laughs> I'd feel the same way. Or smarter. Yeah. And the, the military does have a long and uh, yeah. interesting history of militaries around the world. Yeah. Have a long history of. He's a navy man. Trying to uh, use animals. I know there's one particular amusing but also kind of grisly anecdote from the Second World War. The Russians were trying to train dogs to attach mines underneath tanks oh no right you don't have you to go any further <laughs> yeah just stop there um, uh but yeah that's terrible yeah uh yeah but if there's any consolation that people trying to do that got with jack the jack that dolphin you know. into the matrix i'm ready for it i buy it talk about talk about sweet in the infancy of information yeah i mean Back then, it probably threw everybody off or whatever. But right, if that if that happened now in a movie, I would be. I think people would be more. <laughs> it would be a lot more easier to take. They would just be like, oh, yeah, yeah, there's okay, the, yeah, the dolphin, yeah, yeah. And be like, <laughs> yeah, of course, the dolphin. It totally makes sense. If anything, you know that that come to think of it, the hacking really reminded me of the hacking in Cowboy Bebop because every time you see Ed, like at a terminal, it like kind of looks like that. Like what Keanu's doing in um, uh, in yeah. The mnemonic there. He was minority reporting too on the desk. <laughs> With his gloves or whatever, you know, just doing the swiping thing yeah. and, and expand and expand and all that stuff, you know. I mean, he might have been zooming yeah. in with the pinching. I don't know. I didn't notice. I didn't check that far. That would have been a neat Sorry thing to, to notice. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry. Uh, shout out to the net and virtuosity. <laughs> Sandra, 6. The, 6. San, the Sandra Bullock movie and the Russell Crowe. I'm and, Angela Bennett. Yeah. And what was, who, was, who else was in that? Denzel? Was, was Virtuos Denzel virtu Virtuosity. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and, and uh, a really slim Russell Crowe. He doesn't and a Russell Crowe, yeah. Uh, and, any, and there's another 90s cyber hack movie that I'm, besides Hackers, uh, that I'm, I'm sure I'm missing. Sneakers? Sneakers. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Like has to do with, and there was one called Hackers. I mean, yeah, I know Hackers. Right? Yeah. Oh, Sneakers is real. Yeah. Oh, okay. That wasn't what I was thinking of, but yeah. I had Dan Aykroyd in it. Oh, okay. Oh, I remember that movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm sure there's another one I'm missing, but yeah, The Net, which was oh, Thirteenth Floor, that one too. Uh, that kind of delved into some type of this stuff. That was like '98, right? <laughs> I'm not entirely sure on that. I think it's I think it's '90s, so that's like only a few years after this movie. So then, like, and that's way more of a better movie <laughs> than, than than this one. Like, and just you know, all around, like, yeah, just cinematically. So it's the thing. It's just everyone was still figuring computers out. The internet had just sort of started in the early night, early mid '90s. Yeah, well, I probably like this movie and better so, than Thirteen Four. Actually, more think about it, Thirteen Four is a better produced movie. I can say that. Yeah, 
Uh, but yeah, any other, anything else Johnny Mnemonic, uh, Mnemonic reminds you of? I'm trying to think what other... No, it actually was kind of influential. Oh, Strange Days would have been the other one. Strange Days, yeah, 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 that's what I was thinking about. Strange Days, totally. The mind hack stuff. And there's a lot of that in yeah. Cyberpunk as well. Uh, Strange Days is all over right. Cyberpunk, the video game, 2027. Yeah. 2070. Shout out to Catherine Bigelow. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Catherine Bigelow. Strange Days, for sure. Correct to Point Blank. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Point Break, I mean, sorry. <laughs> point Blank. That's a Cusack film. No, that's Gross Point Blank. Gross Point Blank. Sorry, yeah, yeah. I was close. Yeah. <laughs> point Break, yeah, another one with the Keanu Reeves. Yeah. But yeah, shout that's out, yeah, dog. Dolph Lundgren, man. That was, that was great watching him do that, whatever he was doing. <laughs> He's being crazy. Being crazy, man. That was cool. Yeah. I, I want, I, yeah, you're right. I want more of his backstory. Yeah. Don't, I don't need his whole life story. I just want enough to see how he was and what satisfy and satisfy how, your said, blood how he, Je- how he came to jesus it's, it's, it's <laughs> an interesting part of his character yeah i'm sure the the augmentations probably brought him further to it or something like that these things bring me oh, closer yeah. to god yeah. <laughs> technology brings me closer to god okay we've gone off the deep end <laughs> That's what Dolph's character would be saying. Uh, but yeah, anything else you can think about this movie that you would like our audience to hear before I rate it? Yeah, yeah that's about it. I think we covered a lot of the ground here. We got the, the well developed ideas, badly developed story. Um, Amateurish direction, um, the uh, bizarre musical choices. Yeah, Cam, Cam, FDM, like them. Shout out to them. Multiple, multiple cuts. Uh, of the film which exists somewhere, which and, I, I kind of want to track down. Yeah, I, I'm interested to see if there's other cuts available somewhere, maybe on like DVD or some crap. Uh, and I like how when Takeshi was leaving to go uh, take care of business, he just takes his revolver and his katana. <laughs> <laughs> I wish yeah, he would got a cowboy. Yeah, I wish he would have got a better uh, boss fight because that would have been yeah, that would have been cool. But that was a very cowboy bebop moment. It was um, He's like, spiking got... vicious face off. It's, yeah, got <laughs> yeah, the... got my gear. The sword what... and the revolver. Yeah, and it's like because it's or you know pistol. everybody you saw that other gun he took apart in that one scene where he makes it smaller. It's like this is what the, yeah. everybody's packing these days, and the dude's got his katana and his revolver. <laughs> He's got his yeah. samurai armor in the back. Very old school. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. What do you think about revolvers? 150 plus years old, still work fine. All reliable. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, just moving along to the the ending, I don't know, it just kind of had to hurry up and get this thing all, all done. I mean, it's a nice ending, actually. Well, they didn't explain is where they unlocked the, his childhood memories from. They didn't explain that. I thought it was just the dolphin had magic powers. That might have been because he guess. has because he's a dolphin and he's jacked into the matrix, and he, he can do that. I'm pretty sure. He's the guy that you need to see, to save your memory. Jones, I guess so. Doctor Jones. Yeah, or just Jones. they like just kind of had to wrap everything up. And it's like, oh, you got your memories back. Uh, you got the cure for the disease. You got the girl. <laughs> yeah, um, you got it all. Take your memory too. Why not? Yeah. So that was just they just kind of had to end, so they had to wrap everything up. And like I said, it just felt like they were doing it just to because you're supposed to in a story instead of this is what happened because of what these characters did. Yeah. Yeah. It's, again, flaw in the flaw in the film. <laughs> So if I were to rank it, I have to give it. A, it's a B plus. It's a B plus movie. Ah, uh, really? Yeah, I mean it's got a lot of good things going for it, but there's a. There's I a mean, lot not, of I'm not. Down. Yeah, I was just saying because uh, I'm agreeing with you. I was gonna do some. Sorry, go ahead. Explain. 
Yeah, I mean, there's just there's a lot. It's got a lot of good things going for it, but it's got a lot of stuff dragging it down too. So, A for effort, C for execution. Averages it out to a B plus. <laughs> <laughs> that's the perfect way to review it yeah i second that entirely but uh yeah i also give it a uh a, a cyberpunk 2077.77 version 7.7 out of 10 point oh point oh 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 uh out of yeah just because keanu reeves is cyberpunk 2077 <laughs> And, uh, yeah, no, just exactly what you said as a for, or would you say a for ever B for execution or C for execution yeah. averages out to a B. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah, yeah. It's just like, I see there's like something going on there and I'm, I'm very interested. I want to like more and like all the like tiny things that they touch on that they don't expand upon, which is all the things that they should have been expanding upon. Are, are the things that save it for me is just like just the little touches that are here and there that that don't have anything really to do with you know the acting or production is just like the storytelling elements of it uh just putting jack and shit in your head and you know how yeah how forward thinking they were with the, all that all that stuff and computers and the internet i love everybody i love watching old movies from back then and how they pictured the internet what it was going to be uh especially when they're right and this movie is too crazy to watch. It's like, yeah, the pandemic going on and just like, I don't know, all that other class stuff. Class warfare. Yeah, class warfare is still going on. <laughs> That's never going to stop. But yeah, Cyberpunk 2077 out of 10.0. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, but yeah, I really like this movie. I want to like it more. I haven't seen it in so long. It feels like I've, I've watched like it's brand new, so that was great. Um, I think that helped me enjoying it some. And yeah, just Dolph Lundgren being being having fun. <laughs> Love that part. Uh, yeah, Keanu Reeves' character could have been a little more fleshed out and better for sure. Just the whole, I don't know what's going on. Let's find, find out to the end. Maybe my character will have enough impact at the end to make it all the lack of it beforehand uh, be better. But I don't know. I don't think it, they did that in this one. Uh, but yeah, I'm clearly rambling. But yeah, started Punk 27.7 at 10.0. Uh, and yeah, I guess, uh, any other closing thoughts, Canon, Javier? Do not attempt to smuggle a brain. Um. <laughs> oh, yeah, where the, another part where he put the dude's hand in the carbonite freezing stuff and smashed his hand with the hammer. That was pretty gruesome. I was like, whoa, I didn't see that, yep. <laughs> see that coming. And then he tells him everything. But yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah, that's gonna cool stuff all around. It's worth a check out. Yeah, I, I definitely highly recommend it if you haven't seen it. Especially if you can watch this movie in the year twenty twenty one, go for it. Just seeing all the same things that are going on right now is pretty crazy. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's gonna do it for our uh, gameplay dismay sci fi reviews for Johnny Mnemonic. Uh, 1995 by Robert Longo. Uh, check you guys next time.